Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are finally looking into some of the remaining questions of chapter 5 of the set C and shall be understanding what more can we do with the remaining topics in terms of the questions which would be appearing in the examination. So the next question we have for you is question number 36. It says, uh, which of the following activity in the test process makes the most use of test progress reports? So two important things to worry about. Uh, we need to understand and recall what is test progress report and second important thing in the question is the word most that means somewhere this could have multiple answers but which one is the most utilizing it so let's go and look at the options and options are very simple design completion analysis and plan okay planning is the first phase so uh, plan is also included but if you ask me i would say hey monitoring and control is the most common or mostly utilizing this particular report because first of all the test progress report is a report which talks about the status update of the testing team uh, from time to time and certainly talks about things like uh, you know what we have done how much we have done where are we blocked what needs to be done in order to overcome that blocker and uh, where exactly we need help uh, how much risk we have covered how many defects are open etc so this status update which is a test progress report is created periodically multiple times throughout the life cycle and yes it is done as a part of monitoring and control which is the most utilizing but the point is that is not one of the options given to us okay so i think the next thing what we make use of it is the next let's come to the second rank we make use of this test progress report a lot in test completion phase why because in test completion phase we create a test summary report or otherwise called as test completion report and we gather data from all the TPRs, which is test progress reports. So that's the next thing what we have, right? And the executions, we generate it. We don't use it, okay? Many of you will think, why not execution? The answer is in execution, we create it. We don't use it, okay? User utilization is done by monitoring and control and completion phase to prepare the test summary report. So I think I don't have to worry about to give you the right answer. The very right answer for this particular question is B, that is test completion, is the phase which makes use of the uh, test progress report the most in the given options. Okay, but for your general reference, it is mostly used in the monitoring and control and completion. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is number 37. It says, which of the following, again, is not an example of how configuration management support testing. So we have been discussing this in every playlist, every series of this ABC set. So simple word, configuration management talks about things like uh, the identification, the version control, the uh, traceability and history management. Four important things, wherever you find something relevant to that, you need to skip it. Because the second important thing is the word which is being used in the exam is not. They are not interested in configuration management. So look at the option. Option A says all commits to the repository are uniquely identified and version control. Point number one, that makes very much relevancy to configuration management. B, all changes in the test environment elements are tracked. Tracking for changes is part of configuration management. C, all requirement specifications are referenced unambiguously in the test plan referencing is traceability so indirect word is being used here and d says all identified defects have been assigned have an assigned status assigned status status is the concentration here which is basically a field value and field value does not talk about configuration management okay giving a status to a defect uh, is not our concern with respect to that of configuration management so I think let's keep it straightforward and to the point, the right answer for this particular question is D, that all identified defects have an assigned status is not an example of how configuration management supports testing. Whereas the other three options, yes, they're talking about how configuration management supports testing. Let's move on to the next question and the last question of chapter five. The question here is question number 38 and it says, 
Consider the following defect report for a web-based shopping application. Application name is WebShop version 0.99, defect, login button not working, steps to reproduce, launch the website, click on the login button, expected result, the user should be redirected to the login page, actual result, the login button does not respond when clicked. We have a severity and we do have a priority for it. What is the most important information that is missing from the report? Team, trust me, I always get a lot of comments on these type of questions uh, from many of our viewers. And the only reason is that because people have different significant importance given to different fields in their organization. Okay, so we may have to have our own generic understanding of this. And uh, we sometimes have to uh, stay tuned to that of the uh, you know syllabus in order to get to the right answer because organizations are very much different in their own practices and we respect that the reason is the need of that is completely different your product your domain knows it better what exactly to write but when it comes to examination they stick to the syllabus so right here the options given to us are a name of the tester and date of report b test environment elements and their version number c identification of test object and d impact on the interests of the stakeholder so i think uh, there are a lot of things which we can talk about but uh, if i see some of these information like option a looks really important but uh, i have something more important than that that is environment elements and their version number and the reason why i'm saying it is because number one the, to reproduce the defect first thing when you assign it to a developer or hand it over to someone else all they need to do first step is the reproduce and in order to reproduce all they need some details like you know which version uh, which environment which browser or device you got this because until unless they know that uh, they may not be able to reproduce the defect because if i might be de might be re de uh, reproducing this in my development environment blindly then i may see this happening but in the queue environment it might be working but set environment it might not be working so it's very crucial for us to give the environment details more than our name because as you are reporting it your name will be automatically captured in most of the tools so it's very hard to miss them but even if you miss that in manual ways you would have sent an email so you know who's the sender right so that's where we say name is important but not important than the environment okay i can still reach you otherwise to talk to you but to reproduce a defect, I need the environment details. But if I talk about C, identification of the test object, that is already written in the report. We are talking about the login button. D, impact on the interest of stakeholder, which is basically the severity. And that is also defined in the report very clearly here. So I think that makes our job simpler that the fight was between option A and B, but not C and D. So put together, the right answer for this particular question is B, the environment elements and the version number are missing and are important to be included in this particular defect report. And with that, we complete the chapter 5 of set C and we shall have one more tutorial to talk about sixth chapter questions, which are two of them. And then we'll move on to the last set, that is D. And one way we'll have most of the things being discussed by the end of this playlist. So. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.